Paul Schofield stars in our drama on three this week. We take you back to the 13th century and a test of fire that sparks a bitter struggle for power between three self-centred men intent upon a bloody civil war in Norway. Henrik Ibsen's The Pretenders is our drama on three tonight. Then uh, Dennis Marks concludes his series on the Sepharad. He's been tracing the legacy of the Jews who were expelled from Spain in 1492 by the new Christian kingdoms who brought about an end of 800 years of tolerance under Islam and the Moors. He ends the series in Jerusalem and in London, all in search of the Sepharad, our Sunday feature tonight at half past nine. And Andy Kershaw ends the evening with a session from one of Britain's leading songwriters and virtuoso guitarists, John Martin and is here at 10.15. Programmes this evening here on Radio 3. Climate chaos on the BBC. The government's top scientist says global warming is now virtually inevitable. Will the effects of global warming be as bad as they say? The half degree world's temperature rise this century has already started to melt glaciers. Or will they be even worse? It's the end of the world as we know it. Climate chaos. A season of programmes coming soon, beginning on BBC One with Are We Changing Planet Earth? For more details, log on to bbc.co.uk slash climate chaos. This is Radio 3. It's now time for Drama on 3. Paul Schofield, Michael Sheen and Gerard Murphy lead the cast in a production of Henrik Ibsen's epic drama The Pretenders. In 1218, Norway was a bitterly divided kingdom on the brink of civil war. Supported by the Birchlegs and the people of Oslo, the young King Håkon has come of age, but he's opposed by his uncle, Duke Skula, who has acted as his regent. To try to resolve the crisis, Håkon's mother has agreed to undergo an ordeal by fire to prove that her son is the rightful heir to the crown. Why has nothing happened? Shh. Soon the ordeal will begin. The beginning the sound. Bishop Nicholas is lifting the hot steel from the coals. Now, Inga Avateg will submit to the ordeal by fire on behalf of her son Hawkon, pretender to the crown. If the white hot iron leaves no mark on her hands, Hawkon is her son by our late lamented king and rightful claimant to the throne. Prepare the brand. Fall on your knees. Let those who claim the throne pray for God's wisdom, Hawkon Hawkinson, and Earl Skula. This is a fateful hour for you, my lord Skula, and for many. A fateful hour for Norway, Gregorius. Now Bishop Nicholas is holding forth the burning iron. He's approaching Inga. Christ protect her innocent hands. Soon you will be our rightful king, my lord. All my life I shall reward my mother for this hour. Grasp the hot iron in your hand. Now. God has judged. Behold these my hands. In them I have held the iron. Behold. They are as fair and white as before. Fairer still. God has spoken. Hawken is our late king's son. Thank you, most blessed mother. Bravest of women. Thank you. Well, Skula, I told you it was foolish to insist on the ordeal of the iron. No, my lord bishop, we needed the voice of God. My whole being cried out against this deed, and my heart shrank from it. But now... Mother, it is done. By the ordeal of the iron, I have proved my birth and proved my right in just succession to inherit the kingdom and the crown. Six years ago they named me king, but I was a child, and my uncle, Earl Schooler here, became regent. Little honour has been shown me in this time, but I have been patient, uncle, borne the humiliation and waited. Now I can wait no longer. Bloody civil war threatens our land, and this I must prevent. I might not have risked paying so dearly to prove my right. If I had not felt the certainty of my calling, I feel it deep within me, burning like a flame, and I am not ashamed to declare it. I know that I alone can guide our country to its destiny. King. There are others here who also have belief in themselves. 
What do you mean, my lord? I am your uncle, the late king's brother, and the law supports me when I demand to enter into my inheritance. More oh, treachery. Bessit and Olaf must be the judge. I presume I have misunderstood you, my lord. Has not the ordeal just proved my right to the crown? No, no, we deny that. Earl Schooler also has right on his side. It has proved only that you have a claim and established your right to assert it against other claimants. It has not won you the crown itself. In short, you were saying that for six years I have falsely borne the name of king, and that for six years you, my lord, have unlawfully ruled the kingdom as my regent. By no means. When my brother died, an heir had to be named. The Birchlegs elected you before my claim could be heard. Earl Schooler means that your election only gave you the right to use the name of king, not to wield royal power. I believe that my right to the crown is at least as good as yours. Now, let the law decide between us and say which of us shall inherit it for himself and his descendants. The earl certainly has crowns. Moreover, if your right to the crown was already established six years ago, why did you consent to the ordeal today? If my counsel had been heard, King Hawken would not have chosen hot iron but cold steel as his instrument of justice. I shall call on the king's men to draw the swords and let them decide. To arms against Hawkins' enemies! Show your sword oh, against those opposed to Earl Schooler! No! Show your sword. No! Kill no one, Gregorius. Harm no one. Sheath your swords! Sheath them, I say. Darkfin. My lord. You injure my cause by such rashness. Men who are to rule a kingdom must first learn to rule themselves. You see, Hawken, how every man stands with his sword at his neighbor's throat. It is so throughout the land. Norway is split into a hundred factions, and if you cherish peace and the lives of our countrymen, you know what you must do. Yes. Now I know. Bishop Nicholas, lords and chieftains, I hereby summon the Grand Council. No. The law shall judge. And the law alone. Here I divest myself of all the outward trappings of kingship, my bodyguard, my royal men-at-arms. My inheritance consists only of this brooch and gold bracelet. Take them, my mother, and God's blessings go with you for what you have done this day. Now, uncle, we stand as equals. I want no advantage over you but the divine right I have from God. That I neither can nor will share with any man. Let the council be summoned, and let the law decide. During the ordeal, I thought you seemed afraid, but, but now you look calm and, and almost joyful. Did you see? He had my brother's eyes as he spoke. Whether it be he or I, they will have chosen well. Do not give way to him, though. Remember how many destinies are bound to yours. I take my stand upon justice. Now I grasp the burning iron. Margaret, in here. Yes, it's darkest here, Mother. We can watch the Great Council from here. Yes, there they are. Solemn and silent, as though for a burial. Oh, God. How many of us will mourn this day? It had to come. To be regent could never be enough for him. Yes, it had to come. To be king in name alone could never be enough for him. Whom do you mean? Hawken. I meant the Earl, your father. The two noblest men alive. My father and the man I love. Why couldn't it be enough for them to rule together? Now one will be master in these halls tonight, and one will be his servant. Look. Look at Bishop Nicholas. How slyly he sits, like a chained wolf, biting his beard and smiling. How horribly he smiles, Mother. How still your father is. Hawken seems quiet and thoughtful, but how strong he looks. If a stranger stood here... He'd know those two among all the thousand others. Look, Margaret. Dagfin is bringing a gilded chair for Hawken. And poor Fleda is setting another behind the air. Hawken's men are trying to stop him. My father is clinging to the chair. Hawken is speaking angrily to him. Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you see how your father looks at him? His eyes. And the way he smiles. A smile like Bishop Nicholas. No. That 
was never the Earl. Nor Hawken either. Neither the Earl nor Hawken. Oh, pity. Pity. To climb up to the throne must they stoop so low. Oh, God, please guide them. Did you see him, Sigrid? Did you see your brother? Such eyes, such a smile. I would not have known him as my husband. Did he smile like Bishop Nicholas? Yes, he smiled like Nicholas. A horrible, twisted smile. Then we must pray. Pray for this bloodstained, godless country. They must choose Schooler as king, or I fear for his soul. Let us pray then. Shh! What's that? They've all risen. The flags and standards waving in the wind. Pray. Pray for your husband. Pray for my brother. Pray for your father. Yes, blessed Saint Olaf, grant that he may be king. Pray that he may not. Not? Else he cannot be saved. Schooler must be king. Then all that is good in him will flower and blossom. Swear. Listen, Swear the oath of what is happening? They have raised their hands in oath. Swear. They are swearing allegiance. God and blessed Saint Olaf, to whom? Pray. Shh. To whom? Whom has the council named? They have chosen Hawken Hawkinson as king. Hawken has been proclaimed. Margaret, I am king. I salute my lord and my king. Oh, forgive me, Margaret. I... I've forgotten how this must hurt you. No. You were born to be king, my lord. Yes. Ever since I was born, it is as though God and his saints have protected me, almost miraculously. When I was a year old, there was a plot to kill me, but I was carried to safety across the mountains in frost and storm through the midst of my enemies. In Nidaros, they burned the town, but I escaped unhurt while men were slain all around me. And today, the ordeal... It has always been the same for me. You have served a hard apprenticeship. Something tells me now that you might have made it less hard for me. I? You could have been a source of strength to me all the years we grew up together. But things fell out differently. Yes, things fell out differently. We sat in the same hall. We looked at each other. But from our separate corners... We seldom spoke. Uh, wh wh where is the pen and ink, Dougfrey? Uh, here, my lord. Do you know what I am writing, Margaret? It is a letter to my mother. I am sending her away to the east. She will live there, far from our affairs of state, quietly, but with all honour. Will you not keep her with you at the palace? No. She is too dear to me. A king must have no one by him who is near to his heart. A king must be free to act, he must stand alone, must never be swayed or, or influenced by love. Then he can work with a single purpose, and there is much work to be done in this blighted country. That was my counsel, my Lord Bishop, to send away the king's mother. I recognised your touch, Father Bode. Oh, but you must keep your side of the bargain. Be patient, I shall not forget. Father Bode, fold this and take it to her yourself with my dearest greetings. She must sail today. The wind is fair and westerly. Your Majesty, your mother did not sleep all last night. She spent it at the altar in prayer and fasting. And the ordeal today. Oh, my blessed mother. Uh, well, if uh, she is tired, she may rest until tomorrow. Your Majesty's will shall be done. And the other matter you mentioned, my Lord Bishop. Find Earl Schooler's hands now, King Hawkon. You think I need to? You'll never buy peace for Norway on cheaper terms. Once his hands are bound, you need never fear again. I shall do it. Summon Earl Schooler. Majesty. Give me the pen. Earl Schooler. You seem to have the king's ear, my lord. To your advantage, you will thank me before evening. Read this, my lord. Today I took the kingdom from you. Now let your daughter share it with me. Margaret, will you be my queen? Answer me. I will most gladly be your wife. This is a noble action, 
Walken. Peace and friendship from my heart. Thank you. Heaven be praised. Now, Duckvin, now we shall have peace at last. I almost think so. I have never liked the Earl so well before. Father Body. Stay on your guard, my good Duckvin. Stay on your guard. All is not as it seems. Here are the letters, my lord. Good. Give them to the Earl. To the Earl? Will your majesty not seal them? The Earl does that. He has the seal. Well, he was your regent, yes, but now... Now, as before, the Earl has the seal. Give me the letters, Ava, brother. Hawken is king, and the Earl has the seal. It will pass, it will pass. What are you muttering, my Lord Bishop? I was saying, God and St. Olaf watch over our holy church. A wise queen can do much for our land. I know you were wise, Margaret, and that was what guided my choice. Only that... What do you mean? Nothing, my lord. Nothing. And you will not hate me for making you renounce your fair hopes for my sake? I have renounced nothing for your sake, my lord. And you will stay close to me and give me good counsel? I will most gladly stay close to you, my lord. Every man needs a woman's counsel. And I shall have no one but you when my mother has gone. No. She was too dear to you. And I am king. Farewell, then, Margaret. You are young still. But our wedding shall take place next summer, and from that hour I swear to keep you by me in trust and honour as befits a queen. Yes, you will not send me away. Send you away? Of course not. No. The king only does that to those who are too dear to him. Thank you for the crown, my lord. I think I am glad even of that. A wise deed, my lord. Now your majesty need never fear again. You have counseled well, Bishop Nicholas. Now at last you are king of Norway. <sighs> at last. Hawkon is king. Hawkon is king. king. But with the royal seal, I, Schooler, rule the land. Hawken Hawkinson, do you take Margaret Bardison, daughter of Earl Schooler, as your wife? I do. Do you, Margaret Bardison, take Hawken Hawkinson as your lawful husband? I do. My Lord Bishop, we are glad to have seen you looking so well and strong during these days of rejoicing. I feel a flicker of life in me now and then, Your Majesty, but the next draught may snuff it out. <laughs> the winter has taken its toll of my strength. You have lived a full life, rich in noble deeds. Much is still left undone, Your Majesty. If only I could be sure there was time to finish what I had begun. Living must continue the work of the dead, Reverend Lord. We all have the same goal, the welfare and happiness of Norway. Shall we sound the trumpets for the jousting, Your Majesty? Good. Today, let us be joyful. Tomorrow, our work begins. Come, Margaret, let us watch the jousting. How quiet it is here suddenly. The king is at the jousting. And everyone followed him. Everyone except us. Do you not still wish you were king? Every night when I sleep, I am king of Norway. Dreams can be ermines. And tempters, too. Surely not to you. Not now. When you own a third of the kingdom, carry the great seal, and are the queen's father? Now, most of all. Hide nothing. Confess. I see you are troubled by a great sorrow. Now, most of all, I say, that is the curse that hangs over my whole life. To stand so near to greatness, but with a gap between, only a yard away, a single leap would do it. And there, on the other side, lie the crown, power, everything. Every day I see them, but I can never take the leap. True, my lord. Years ago, when they chose young Sigurd as king, I was in the full flower of manhood, and it was as though a cry sounded in my ear. Away with this child. I am the grown strong man. But Sigurd was the king's son. That was the gulf that then lay between me and the throne. So you waited? I waited for Sigurd to die. And when he did, your brother became king? Yes. Then I waited for him to die. He was already sick. Every morning when we met at Mass, I watched to see if the sickness might not take him. Every twist of pain that crossed his face was like a breath of wind in my sail to carry me nearer to the throne. 
Every moan he uttered sounded in my ears like trumpets from a distant hill, summoning me to lead my people. I stifled every brotherly thought. And my brother died. And Hawken came. And the Birchlegs chose him king. And still you waited. I sensed the divine right in me. So I thought help must surely come from above. But I was growing older. Every day that passed was a day stolen from my life's work. Each night I thought, tomorrow a sign will come that will strike him down and set me up on the empty throne. Then Hawkon's power was weak. He was only a child. You had only to take a single step. But you did not take it. It was a hard step to take. It would have divided me from my family and from my friends. That is the curse that has dogged your whole life. You are a man who has to leave every road open behind you. You dare not burn all your bridges except one and stand on that alone to conquer or fall. You lay snares for your enemy, hang swords over his head, put poison in his dishes and set a hundred traps for him but if he enters one of them, you dare not spring it. If he reaches for the poison, you think he'd better die by the sword. If he is about to be caught one morning, you think it would be safer if it happened in the evening. That, Earl Skula, is your tragedy. Then answer me one question. Why does Hawken never falter in his path? Who accomplishes most in this world? He who is greatest. But who is greatest? He who is bravest. <laughs> That is the soldier's answer. The priest would say, he who has the greatest faith, a philosopher, he who is wisest. But none of these is right. The greatest man is he who has the most luck. Luck? This is the man who accomplishes the greatest deeds. The hunger of his age inflames him like a passion. It generates thoughts in him which he himself does not understand, but which point for him the way which leads he knows not whither, but which he must follow until he hears the people cry in joy and looks about him with distended eyes and is amazed and realizes that he has performed a mighty deed. Yes, that is Hawken. But I could be the same if I had his luck. Was he created from another dust than I? Was he born lucky? If not, why does everything turn out right for him? Why does everything bend to his will? Even the humblest man notices it. He says the trees bear fruit twice every summer now that Hawken goes to war. The Lord renews the fields that Hawken tramples. The country which he burns and harries is bright again with crops bending richly before the wind. And how easily he strode to the throne. He needed my brother's death and my brother died. He needed an army and men flocked to him. He needed the proof of the ordeal and his mother underwent it for him. We, we too. We? I mean you. You. I stand in the shadow doubting. Hawken has right on his side, my lord. Did you never see the old painting in the church at Nidaros? It shows the river of sin swelling and rising over every mountain so that one peak is left standing above it. Yes. Up to this peak has struggled a family, father and mother and son, and the son's wife and children. The son has thrown his father down into the waters to gain a safer foothold, and he's trying to throw his mother down and his wife and all his children so that he may climb his way to the top, because up there is a square foot of rock on which he can survive for an hour. That, my lord, is the saga of wisdom and the saga of every wise man. But was he right? Of course he was right. He had the strength and passion to live. Bow to your passion and use your gifts. Every man has that right. Only if the end is good. You play with words. There is no such thing as good or evil. Those are words you must forget or you will never take the final step, never leap the gulf. You must not hate a party or a cause because the party or the cause demands this and not that, but you must hate every man who supports a cause if it does not advance your own. Everything that you can use is good. Everything that puts an obstacle in your path is evil. Don't you see that there is a stronger power behind Hawkon? Advancing his ambitions, he gets help from those above, from those who oppose you. 
They were your enemies from the hour you were born, and you bow before these enemies. Rise up, man. Straighten your back, defy them. Why else were you granted an immortal soul? Remember the first great deed in history was performed by one who also rebelled against a mighty king. Who? The angel who rebelled against the light. And for his sin was cast into a bottomless abyss. Where he created a kingdom and became a king. A mighty king. Mightier than any of those ten thousand who stayed above. Bishop Nicholas, are you a man or something less or something more? I am in a state of innocence. I do not know the difference between good and evil. If only I had a son. If only I had a son who could inherit it all from me. If you had a son? Then I could believe in myself. Hawkland will have sons. And is a king's son? But if he were not, despite the ordeal... Are you saying that God lied? What was it that Inga begged God to witness when she gripped the hot steel? That the child she bore, that Hawkland was the son of the king. And if Hawkland were not that child... Oh, my... That is unthinkable. Listen to me, my lord. I am 76 years old, and I dare not take this secret with me. What are you saying? Hawken is not the king's when son? When Inga found herself with child, it was kept secret. The king, her lover, had just died, and she was afraid of the new king, your brother, and of you. She bore the child secretly in the house of a priest named Tron. Nine days later, she returned home, but the royal babe remained with the priest a whole year. She dare not visit it. No one knew about it except Tron. Yes, yes, and then? You will appreciate how dangerous it was for a humble priest to have the upbringing of a king's son. Therefore, soon after the baby was born, he revealed the truth in the confessional. His confessor counseled Tron secretly to exchange the child for another, send the true prince to a safe place, and give Inga the changeling if she should ever claim her son. Who was the dog who dared give such advice? It was I, my lord. I was Tron's confessor. You? I thought it would be unsafe for the young prince to fall into your hands. The priest? Promised to do as I advised. And Hawken is the changeling? If the priest kept his promise. If he kept it? A year later, Inga revealed the existence of her child, and a baby was brought from Tron's house to the royal palace. Everyone assumed it was hers. But that same winter, Tron left the country on a pilgrimage to the grave of Thomas Beckett and stayed in England until he died. This proves he exchanged the child. He fled the country because he feared the revenge of the Birchlands. Or he did not exchange it and feared my revenge. Which do you believe? Both are equally like And Inga? He knows nothing either of the priest's confession or of the advice I gave him. Her baby was only nine days old when she left him, you say? Yes, and the child she saw next was over a year old. And there is no one in the world who knows the answer. Almighty God, can it be true? Hawken, an imposter? Yet no one looks as he does. His eyes laugh and glitter like the sun. He looks at the day as though he knew himself born to go forward, always forward. The people gaze adoringly at him, and every eye shines the unshakable belief that he is their rightful king. That is because he believes it, my lord. That is his luck. That is where his strength lies. And yet, perhaps he is not. No, perhaps he is not. If you are to go forward, if you are to take the final step, you must hide the fact that you don't believe in yourself. Look as though you did. Swear boldly and passionately that you do, and the people will all believe in you. Oh, What's that noise? Dogfin has broken through the crowd. He's whispering to Hawken. The king looks angry. The guy clenches his fist. Now he looks up here. What can it be? I must go to him. My lord, listen to me. There is a way to find whether Hawkon is the rightful heir. A way? Before he died, Trant the priest wrote a letter revealing what he had done, and swore upon the sacrament that what he had written was the truth. And this letter, in God's name, where is it? Well, Shh. here comes the king. The letter, my lord, where is the letter? Here is the king. Oh, school up. Who is king in this land? Who is king? Yes, who is king? That was my question. I bear the name of king, but who wields the royal power? Royal power should be wielded by the lawful king. Yes, but is it? Are you accusing me? I am as is my royal right. I am not afraid to answer for my actions. Let us hope for all our sakes that you can. I stand here as your king and ask you, do 
you know that Earl John of Orkney has rebelled against me? Yes. And is it true, my lord, that today you sent him a letter? I did. Bearing the king's seal? Yes. So you write to the king's enemies and seal your letters with the king's seal, although the king does not know what has been written in his name. I have done so for many years with your knowledge. But then you were my regent. You never suffered by it and will not suffer this time. Earl John wrote to me and asked me to mediate between him and you. He wanted peace, but on terms dishonourable to your majesty. His letter should have been shown to me. How did you reply? Read my letter. Give it to me. Gregorius, give the king the letter. My lord. What is it? You remember, my lord, you wrote sharp words of the king. I can answer for them. Give me the letter. I no longer have it. No longer have it. Darkfin, the peasant, must have found out about it. He pursued us to the shore. I seized the letter from the ship's captain and tied a stone to it. And tied a stone to it? What are you... It is lying at the bottom of the fjord. You have done ill, Gregorius. Ill. I am waiting for the letter, my lord. I cannot give it to you. You cannot. Are you defying me? If you wish, yes, I am defying you. My lord, I think no man needs further proof than this. Earl Schooler, I order you to surrender the royal seal. No, no. Give it to my chaplain. Who can no. be a gentle and merciful husband to me? Spare my father. Surrender the seal. Here. Here it is. Everybody, take the seal from Earl Schooler. Are we to endure this any longer? We cannot, will not endure it. I say it plainly for all to hear. The Earl's men cannot serve the king with loyalty if the Earl does not keep the seal. Give back the seal. The Earl must have the seal. Take it into your own hands, Your Majesty. It should have rested there long ago. God bless and prosper all your undertakings. I kiss the symbol of royal power. Now, my lord. Evil angels are coming between us today. You must not ask more of me. The Earl is right, Your Majesty. You say so, Reverend Lord. I say that justice must be done. Your Majesty, more than one man's blood will be shed. Perhaps, but treason must be punished. All the Earl's men shall here swear an oath of allegiance. Oh, you oh. cannot mean this. King Hawken, do not do this. No man of the Earl's shall leave until he has sworn allegiance to me, their lawful king. My lord. Sigurd. Grant me a boon, your majesty. Rise, Sigurd. Whatever you ask shall be granted. The nunnery at Rain will soon be consecrated. Write to the archbishop and beg that I may become abbess there. Why? Why do you wish to enter a nunnery? Since the night at Nidaros, when they burned the city and murdered my husband at our wedding, the blood and fire have blinded my eyes to the outward world. But I have gained the power to see what other eyes cannot, and I see it now. A time of dreadful horror for our land. My sister is sick. Pay no heed to her. A rich harvest shall ripen for him who reaps in the dark. Norway's women have but one task now, to kneel in churches and nunneries and pray. Pray day and night. Take her away. The woman is mad. Take her away, Duncan. Farewell, my brother. We shall meet once more. We shall meet when you need me in your soul's extremity. When your peril is greatest. When you seize the crown. You will need me then. The king has used you harshly today. And remember, he may be a changeling... The son of a peasant. The priest's confession. Where is it? He sent it to me from England before he died. I don't know by whom, and I've not received it. It must be found. I'm sure it will and be. And you will place it in my hands? You shall have it. You swear it by your soul's salvation? I swear it by my soul's salvation. Good. Until then, I shall work against Hawken wherever I can. He must not be more powerful than I am when the struggle begins. But if Translator proves that he is the true heir to the crown, what then? Then I shall beseech God for a humble spirit to serve him loyally and with all my strength. And if he is not? Then he shall yield to me. His crown and his throne, his army and his bodyguards, his treasure and his fleet, his cities and his palaces. He will fly to his castle. I shall hunt him there. He will seek refuge in sanctuary. I shall violate the sanctuary. He will flee to the altar and cling to St. Olaf's shrine. Then I shall drag him down from the altar, even if I have to drag the saint's shrine with him. But Hawkon will still have the crown on his head. Then I shall strike it off with my sword. But what if it should sit too tightly, my lord? Then in God's name, or in Satan's, I shall strike his head off with it. Yes, this way I like the Earl.
Hello? The whole fleet of God be praised, and the Earl is not far off. His ships are past the Cape. He sent me ahead. How is Bishop Nicholas? Receiving the last sacrament. They say he cannot survive the night. Then we have come too late. No, no, he is fully conscious, and has a little strength left. Every minute he asks when the Earl will be here. You still call him Earl? Don't you know the King has made him a Duke? Yes, yes, of course. I'd forgotten. So, the old man has settled his account with this world. Can I tell him that Duke Schooler will be here soon? He will come straight here from the harbour. Goodbye. What are these for, Brother Peter? He asked to rest out here. Is that wise? The doctors say we must humour him. Light more candles. Place me close to the fire, Seagull. Yes, my lord. William, I've received absolution for my sins. They've all been taken from me. I feel so light now. Duke Schooler has sent word to you, my lord. He will be here at any moment. That's good. Very good. The king will surely be here soon, too. As my chaplain, you know, I've been a sinful dog in my time, William. Oh, my I've sinned grievously against the king. The priests in there said all my sins would be forgiven me. That's all very well. It's easy for them to promise I haven't sinned against them. <laughs> no. No, I'll best have pardon from the king's own lips. Lights, I say. It's so dark in here. The candles are lit, my lord. How do you feel, my lord? So, 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 so. My hands and feet are cold, Doctor. I've ordered eight monks to sing and pray for me in the chapel tonight. Keep an eye on them. They're lazy dogs, some of them. So much still undone. And they have to leave it all. So much undone, William. Think of heaven, my lord. There's no hurry. The doctor says I've got till morning. My lord. My lord. Give me my mitre and my staff. You do it. You're right. I must try to think of... No, no. No, put the mitre here. It's too heavy for me. Place my staff in my hand. There. Now I'm armed. A bishop. The evil one dare not touch me now. Leave me, all of you. <laughs> my lord. Who's there? Who's there? Brother Peter, my lord. Why do you stay behind? I have a letter for you, my lord. A letter? It was given to me by a priest newly arrived from England. He made me promise to deliver it to you in secret. He said it was from someone named Trond. Give it to me. Peter. My lord? Have you ever seen an old man die? No. They're all afraid. I'll swear to that. <laughs> Are they singing in there? Yes, my lord. You eight big fellows with throats like trumpets. <laughs> Is your mother well? Yes, my lord. Did you give her my message? Yes, my lord, but, but let me pray. The message? Did you give her my message? I did, my lord. I've left too much unfinished, Peter. Life is too short. Oh, Lord. Oh, are you in great pain? Oh, there's a ringing in my ears. A light flickers in my eyes. It is the bells of heaven ringing you home. And the light is the altar candles which God's angels have lit for you. Yes, yes, of course, there's nothing to fear. As long as they go on praying in there. Leave me. I'm not afraid to be alone. Farewell, my lord. We shall meet again when the bells of heaven sound for me, too. <laughs> yes, it's easy to talk like that when you're young and healthy. So much left undone. Trans confession. So it's come after all. I swore to the Duke on my soul's salvation to give it to him if ever I received it. And here it is, lying in my hand. One should never swear anything on one's soul's salvation when one's as old as I am. If I had time left, I'd find a way out of the oath. But tonight, my last night, no, that wouldn't be wise. But how can I keep it? That would mean risking everything I've worked for all my life. 
If the Duke knew for sure he would conquer or yield, and either way one of them would become the mightiest man ever to have lived in Norway. No, no, what I can't have, no one else shall have. Schooler must remain uncertain. Then the strife will go on forever. Towns will be burned. Whole regions laid waste, neither shall profit by the other's defeat. He must never know. If only I could cheat the evil one just once more. What's that? Mercy. Mercy. I'm the one who was guilty. I started it all. I drove them on. Translator. It must be heaven's will that I shall reconcile the king and the duke. This is a hard thing, Nicholas, to destroy your life's work at a single blow. But this time I must obey his will. I can't read a word. A mist drifts before my eyes. But I dare not let anyone else read it to me. I must, I shall live longer. In this letter rests Norway's history for the next hundred years. It lies here, dreaming like an unborn chick. Oh, if only I had time, I would hatch you into a hawk that would cast the shadow of fear over the whole land and sink its sharp claws into every human heart. Oh, but the judgment, the punishment, no, no. You shall be a swan, a white swan. Doctor! Doctor! What is it, my Master lord? Master Seagard, tell me three days' life. I have told you. I'll pay well three days of life, only three days. If I had to die with you, my lord, I could not add three days to your span. One day, then, just one day. Let it be daylight. Let the sun be shining when I depart. Listen, Seagard. I've given nearly all my gold and silver to the church to have great masses read. When I'm gone, I'll revoke my will. You shall have it all. <laughs> what, Seagard? Shall we fool these fellas in there? Just the two of us? <laughs> You'll be rich, Seagard. <laughs> well, why don't you answer? I have no time, my lord. I will prepare a drink which may ease you a little at the last. No, wait. I have no time. The drink must be ready within an hour. An hour. Within an hour. William, William! Get more people to sing in there. Eight aren't enough. My lord. More, I say. Brother Colburn has been sick in bed for five weeks. He can't have sinned much in that time. He went to confession yesterday. He'll do then. Get him. Within an hour. Oh, stifling in here. That doctor's a dog. What's the use of all his learning if he can't give me another hour? He sits there in his room all day, fiddling with the little wheels and weights and levers, trying to make something that will go on forever, round and round and never stop. Perpetuum mobile, he calls it. Why doesn't he use his knowledge to make men do that? Perpetuum mobile. Round and round till the end of time. What if I could set wheels and weights and levers working in the king's heart and the duke's, set them going so that no power on earth could stop them? If I can do that, I shall go on living and survive through my work. Perhaps that's what's meant by immortality. Oh, cool and comforting thoughts to ease an old man's heart. The devil's been after me tonight. It's all this lying idol, otium est pulveris, pulveris, now damn that Latin. The devil shan't get his claws into me again. I'll go on working to the end. Stop that din in there, I'm trying to think. My lord, you asked for them to... Tell them to keep quiet, they're distracting me. Very well, my lord. Wait a moment, William. Give me that letter. Which one, my lord? That one, crumpled on the floor. Good. Now go and tell them to keep quiet. 
to die and yet to rule in Norway, to die and yet to make sure that no man will ever raise his head above the rest. How? Ah, oh, but of course, it's so easy. I shall keep the oath, the duke shall hold the letter in his hands, and the king... Hmm. The king shall know it too. He shall feel the sting of doubt in his heart. His faith in himself shall falter. Both shall believe and doubt. Seesaw up and down, never feel firm ground beneath them. Round and round... Perpetuum mobile. Ah, my spirit feels young again. I shall work on my last night, work till the light goes out. Please send greetings, Reverend Lord. How goes it with you? I am a corpse in bud. Tonight I shall flower. Tomorrow you shall know my perfume, Duke School. Tonight? So my doctor says within the hour. And the priest's letter? Do you still think about it that? It never leaves my mind. Now the king has made you a duke. No man has ever held that rank in Norway before. It is not enough. If Hawkin is not the rightful king, I oh, must have everything. It's cold in here. It bites through my limbs. A letter, my lord, in the name of God. Tell me, has it come? I know where it can be found. Then tell me, tell me. The king is coming. We can see his torches. He shall be made welcome. Tell him I wait to greet him. I'll tell him. Your grace. In return, I crave a last favor of you. When I'm dead, avenge me against my enemies. I've written their names. Those at the top I should like hanged, if it could be arranged. Do not think of revenge now. You have no time. Not revenge. Punishment. Swear you will punish all my enemies when I am gone. They are as jealous of you as they were of me. When you are king, you can punish them. Swear you will do it. Very well, I swear it. But where is Strong's letter? I will tell you. But not yet. Here comes the king. Hide the list of our enemies. Welcome to my funeral feast, your majesty. Greetings, my lord bishop. Why is the duke here? My lord bishop, will you assure King Hawken upon my faith and honor that I did not know he was coming here until I set foot on Oslo Key? Alas, alas, the blame is mine. I've been bedridden these last months. I thought all was now well between you two noble kinsmen. My friendship with the Duke prospers best when we do not see each other. Therefore, farewell, Bishop Nicholas. You have been my enemy, but death settles all accounts, and I forgive you. God be with you, whithersoever you are bound. My lord, my lord, he's going! Stay, King Hawken! What trap is this? Your Majesty shall not leave this room before old Bishop Nicholas has delivered his last sermon. Once my family was the greatest in this land. Many mighty chieftains issued from it. I wanted to be king. I hungered for great deeds when I was a boy. I felt I could hardly wait for manhood. Then came the day of my first battle. The sun shone, and its light flashed from a thousand polished swords. The trumpets sounded, and our ranks moved forward as though to a game. I alone felt a tightening round my heart. Our army fought bravely forward, but I could not follow. I fled across the mountain, ran and ran, and didn't stop until I'd reached the fjord far from the battle. Many men washed their bloody clothes in Trondheim Fjord that night. <laughs> I had to wash mine too, but not of blood. Yes, King, I was afraid. Born in love with greatness and afraid. It smote me like a thunderbolt. I prayed secretly in the churches. I wept and kneeled before the altars. I made rich offerings and sacred vows. I tried to fight in battle after battle, always in vain. They laughed when I stepped forth in my armor. Since then, I have hated because I could not love. Women, oh, I could devour them even now with glistening eyes. I'm eighty years old, and still I yearn to destroy men and possess women. But it was the same in love as in battle. Only the will, only the desire, impotent from birth, tormented with the seething gift of love, and yet a cripple. So I became a priest. He who wishes to rule must either be a king or a priest. <laughs> 
I, a priest, a man of God. <laughs> well, heaven had fitted me for one holy office, to sing high notes, to lead with a woman's voice at the great church festivals, a half-man, not sinning, but sinned against. Let heaven stand in the dock. I am the accuser. My lord, the letter, you have not long left. Think of your soul and humble yourself. A man's life work is his soul, and my life's work shall not die. But you, King Hawkon, take care. For just as heaven has opposed me and suffered by it, so you oppose the man who holds the welfare of our country in his hand. Enough. Duke Schooler will oppose you as long as his head sits on his shoulders. Share with him. I shall find no peace in my coffin. I shall walk unless you share. Neither of you must stand on the other's shoulders. There must be no giants in Norway, for I was never one. Share, share. For God's sake, Hawken, bring help. The old man must not die yet. It's getting dark. I can't see. King, for the last time, will you share with the Duke your uncle? I shall not part with one fragment of what God has given me. Very well. Then I will split you in two myself. Where's my chaplain? William? The letter. You swore an oath to give me the letter. William! Yes, my lord. When I received the last sacrament, all my sins were forgiven me. All your sins from birth until unction. Only till then? My lord, you cannot sin tonight. Oh, who knows? Take the golden chalice I had from Bishop Absalom and give it to the church. And read seven more masses. My lord, God will be merciful. Seven more masses, I say, for the sin I shall commit tonight. Go, go. Your grace, when you read the priest's letter, if it reveals that Hawkon is the rightful king, what will you do? Search every corner of your heart. Answer as though you stood before your ultimate judge. What will you do if you know he is the king? Bow my knee and serve him. Then, weak man, take the consequences. Your Grace, I'm weak and weary. I feel moved by a spirit of mercy and forgiveness. God's death, the letter. Where is it? Something else. First, I gave you a list of my enemies. Yes, yes, I shall avenge you. No, it. I feel so peaceful now. I want to forgive. The good book says we should. As you renounce absolute power, I renounce revenge. Burn the list. Yes, 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 as you wish. Here, in the fire, so I can see it. Look, there it burns. And now speak, speak. Thousands of lives may perish if we do not speak now. Thousands of lives will perish. Oh, light. Oh. Bring help. Oh. The bishop is dying. Oh. Norway's oh. glory for centuries, oh. perhaps her greatness for all eternity. Oh. Oh. For all eternity. Perpetuum. Mobile. But your soul's salvation. Where is the priest's letter? Seven more masses, will you? The letter! The letter! You have burned it, most noble duke. You have burned it. Almighty oh, God. The devil! Evil spirits are loose tonight. One laughed from the corner. It cried, we have him. All the candles were quenched. Bishop Nicholas is dead. Above the rafters of the hall among the stars in peaceful skies in answer to the angel's call in dreams my little hawken flies sleep sleep father oh how i've longed to see you god's peace be with you where is the king Shh, come come here and look your child is yes this beautiful child is mine his name's Hawken, like the king. Look at his eyes. 
Oh, now you can't see them now. He's sleeping. But he has great blue eyes. And he knows me already. He laughs and stretches out his hands to touch me. The bishop prophesied, Hawker Lord of Sons. I can hardly believe I'm so happy. I sleep with the cradle close by my bed every night, so that if I wake, I can reach out my hand and touch him to make sure it isn't a dream. Is the king here? Yes. I'll go and fetch him. Duke Schooler, you must stand guard over your grandson while I'm away. If he wakes, you must bow low and salute him as you would a king. Now, I'll fetch Hawken. Oh, when you see him, won't you try to settle your differences and become friends again? Every day I pray to God that it may happen. The king's son. What a pretty forehead. He's dreaming. A little one like you could lead a man's soul from despair. I have no son. He looks like Hawken. Bow low and salute him as you would a king, she said. If Hawken dies before me, this child will be set upon the throne, and I, I shall stand at his footstool, bowing before him, saluting him as king, white-haired and bent with age, seeing my life work sleep unborn. Burn all your bridges but one, the bishop said. That was three years ago, and what have I done? Left every bridge open, defied it, and wasted my strength. What have I seized this child? I can count on the citizens here. What could Hawken do if his son were in my power? So be it. Let the step be taken, let the gulf be leaped. But if I did win the crown, would not doubt still consume me, gnaw and devour me until it bored right through my brain? Yes, yes. But it is better to have the crown and be filled with doubt than to stand below in the crowd and doubt him who sits on high. I must settle things once and for all. For once I have the advantage, I must exploit it. But now, tonight, if only I could see whether you have the old king's eyes. He is asleep, I cannot tell. Sleep is a sentinel. Sleep in peace, little pretender. I shall speak to Hawken once more. He shall decide what is to be. Now Bishop Nicholas is dead. Oh, believe me, all our troubles will die with him. Go to bed, Margaret. You must be tired after your journey. Yes. Yes. Father... Be gentle and yielding. Hawken has promised you will yield as well. Good night, both of you. King Hawken, this time we must not part as enemies. Evil will follow. It will be a time of dreadful horror for our land. My sister warned us. When I became king, I gave you a third of the kingdom. You thirsted for more. I increased your share. Now you own half the country. Still you demanded more. I made you a duke, a title no man in Norway has ever had before. But you are king. There must be no king above me. I was not born to serve you. Heaven protect your reason, my lord. Good night. Listen to me. Remember the bishop's words. Let us share. Divide the kingdom. It has happened before. We will be friends and allies. Let us rule in turn. Do you think my crown would fit your forehead? No crown is too broad for me. A man must be called by God before he can wear a crown. And are you sure that God has called you? I know he has. Very well, then. Let us fight, man against man, sword against sword, to the death. Blind man, I pity you. Can't you see that it is your own pride that lures you towards the throne, not God's calling? What is it that tempts you, the golden circlet, the purple clock, the right to sit with your chair three inches above the floor? They are nothing, nothing. If that were to be king, I would toss the kingdom into your hat as I throw a penny to a beggar. You have all the gifts of the mind, shrewdness and courage. But you were born to stand next to the king, not to be king yourself. That is what we shall prove. In all the years you ruled the country for me, name me one deed that you accomplished worthy of a king. The land was harried by rebel factions, but did you bring a single one to heal? Yet you were the mature man. When I took power, I was young and inexperienced, but they all submitted to me. Now there are no rebels left. That is the last thing you should boast about, for therein lies your greatest danger. Party must vie with party, interest with interest, district with district, if the king is to stay powerful. Every region, every faction must either need the king or fear him. If you root out all dissension, you undermine your power. How can you hold a belief like that 
and think yourself fitted to rule. Fifty years ago you could have been a worthy chieftain, but that time is past. Don't you see that this kingdom is like a church waiting to be consecrated? The walls stand on strong foundations. The vaulted roof spans wide. The spire points upwards like a forest pine. But there is no life in it. No beating heart, no blood pulsing in its veins. God's spirit has not breathed into it. I shall consecrate our country. Norway has been a kingdom. It shall become a people. The men of Bergen with those of Oslo. Henceforth all shall be one, and shall rejoice in their unity. That is the task which God has set upon my shoulders. That is the promise of our land, the mission of future kings. And it is a task which you, my lord, would never accomplish, for to speak plainly, you have not the gift for it. Unite! Unite all Norway! But that's impossible! Such a thing has never been known, even in the sagas. For you, it is impossible. You only retell the old legends. But for me, it is as easy as for the hawk to cleave the clouds. To unite the whole people? To make them know they are one? Where did you find such a thought? It comes from the devil, Hawken. It shall never be done as long as I have the strength to lift a sword. The idea is from God. And I shall not abandon it as long as I wear St. Olaf's crown. Then the crown must fall. By whose hand? Mine, if no other. Hawken, do not tempt God. Do not drive me to the brink of the abyss. Go, my lord. And let us forget that we spoke with sharp tongues tonight. We shall speak with sharper tongues when we next meet. He cannot mean to threaten me. He must. He shall obey me. I need his strong arm and shrewd brain. God has given him those gifts that he may serve me. To defy me is to defy heaven. My king, be in the guard tonight. I fear the duke intends some mischief. Mischief? What mischief, Doctor? I don't know, but I saw him whispering to his followers. I'm sure something is afoot. Can he be planning to attack us? Go to the window. What is he doing now? Boarding ship. They're hoisting sail. Go. Find out what is happening. Unthinkable. He would never rebel. God would not allow it. I must have peace now. Peace to begin my work. I hear God's urgent voice crying within me. Thou shalt achieve a mighty deed for Norway. My lord and king. Gregorius, would you... You are schooner's man. No longer. I come to offer myself as your liege man. But how can I... Thus far have I followed the duke. Now I dare follow him no more. What has happened? Something no man will believe. Tread to hear the sound of my own words, but you must know. What? You are mad. Would to God I were. Impossible. It cannot be. By the precious blood of Christ, it is. Go, go. Bid them sound the trumpets. Call my bodyguard. Summon all my men. Margaret. Hawken? Is it you? Yes, yes. You are wise, Margaret. I need your counsel. What has happened? Terrible news. There are two kings in Norway Two now. kings? Oh, almighty God. Hawken, where is my father? He has proclaimed himself king on board his ship. He is sailing to Nidoros to be crowned. Oh. Two kings in the land. My husband, one, and my father, the other. What shall I do? Cross the mountains, get there before him, and prevent his coronation? No, impossible. He is stronger than I in the north. I have too few men for that. But what shall I do, Margaret? How can I kill him before he gets there? Hawken! Hawken! Why does God chastise me like this? Schooner is the most dangerous enemy I could have. I must kill him. Help me, Margaret. Help me to think of a way to kill him. <laughs> he is my father. <laughs> yes. Your father. I had forgotten. <laughs> Don't cry. Comfort yourself. Why should you suffer for this madness? I ask why God punishes me. And I have my answer. I have sinned grievously against you. I have shunned your feelings and closed my heart to you. You, who have given me so much love. Forgive me, Margaret. I need you. I need your warmth 
and light. Oh, Hawk, my beloved husband. Am I near to you at last? Yes, yes. Now you stand close to me. Not to give me wise counsel, but to light my path. If there are two kings in Norway, there is only one in heaven. Now he must guide us. And this is sure, since the days of yore, was never so fierce a fight. <laughs> the plain, like warriors winding sheets, grew red. That be he for was white. Where hawk and hides, no man can state. King Schooler holds fort and town. Hail, King! Long, long mayst thou be great. And wear proud Norway's crown. Hail, King! Thank you for your song, good yet. Uh, I like a song that praises warriors. I promise you, my lord, I shall compose a great ode to you when you kill the sleeper. The sleeper? That is what they call Hawken now, since you beat him at Larker. He is lain in Nidros like a man paralyzed. <laughs> they say he has renounced the church and all that is holy. No, no. He refused to attend mass on New Year's Day. He had a good excuse. He spent the whole day chopping up the church's silver. He had nothing else to pay his men with. <laughs> I drink to you, poor brother. My and king. I thank you and all those who have newly joined my cause. My lord. You fought bravely for me at luck. You have a good store of cunning, King Schooler. Your enemies never know where you are until you're upon them. Uh, You'll enter need of us in triumph, your majesty. And this time, the monks will not dare to refuse to bring St. Olaf's shrine from the church. You will be proclaimed beside it in the marketplace. And then you'll be king of all Norway. King of all uh, Norway! The shrine must be brought out. My coronation must be lawful. Hail, hail, King Schooler, lead us against the enemy. Now you're sure of victory. Go to your beds now. We have sat late at the tables today. Tomorrow we'll cast lots for the birch legs good. Oh, no, let's each grab what we can get. <laughs> The wolves are fighting for the bear's belt. Aye, before they have killed him. How tired I am. Day in and day out to stand amidst these men, smiling as though I were certain of my cause and without one true friend in whom I can confide my fears. Hawken sent his army against me, and the impossible happened. Hawken lost, and I won, and yet I am still afraid. When the question comes to me unawares, which of us is rightful king, my heart always answers he, and never I. To imagine myself as king, I have to use art, build a crown of dreams. I have to chase away memories and possess faith by force. Why? Is it because Bishop Nicholas burnt the letter? No. That only made my doubt eternal. It did not increase it. Then what is it? Oh, that's strange. It dances on the tip of my tongue like a forgotten word. What was it, Hawkins said? Ah, now I remember. Norway has been a kingdom. It shall become a people. All shall be one and shall rejoice in their unity. Since Hawkins spoke those madman's words... I see him clearly as the rightful king. Did those words reveal God's calling? Has he chosen Hawken to be his prophet? Your Majesty, I have news. News? A man from down the fjord says the birch legs have put out to sea and that many strangers have entered Oslo during the last few days. Then we shall deal with them. My, Tomorrow, perhaps. My lord, perhaps they plan to surprise we us. We shall beat them as we did at Larkin. My lord, it is not so easy to beat the birch legs twice in succession. Why not? Because our country saga tell us that such a thing has never happened before. Remember, Your Majesty, the citizens of Oslo hate you, and if the birch legs come here, they will make common cause with them. Oh, Frida, isn't it possible that the people of Oslo might support me? No. My lord, that is unthinkable. Why? Why? Because Bord Brate and the people of Trondheim fight on your side. Could not both support me? No, my lord, that is impossible. Unthinkable, impossible. Why? Why shouldn't they? Because the people of Trondheim are the people of Trondheim. 
and the men of Oslo are the men of Oslo. And because the sagas tell us that that is so, and because it always has been so. Yes, yes, you're right. Go. Shall I not send scouts? Wait till daybreak. My lord. The sagas of Norway tell us that it is so, and it has always been so. He answers me as I answered Hawken. Has God given Hawken the power to see what I cannot see? Can a man rob another of that power, as he can take arms and gold from the enemy he has slain? Can a pretender put on the divine calling? Since Hawken spoke of his great ideal, I can think of nothing else. Why should I not make it mine and fulfill myself? Why should I not unite Norway? If it is beyond my power, why do I love this vision? Forgive me, Your Majesty. You are welcome, poet. I thought it my duty to tell you there are rumours in the town. Tell me, Edgar Hire, you have travelled far and wide. Have you ever seen a woman love a child that was not her own, love it with her heart and soul? Only women with no children of their own do that. Only those? Especially women who are barren. Barren? Do they? Often. And does a barren woman ever kill someone else's child because she has none of her own? Oh, yes. But that's a foolish thing to do. Why foolish? Because then she gives the other woman something priceless. The gift of sorrow. Is sorrow so precious? Yes, my lord. Sorrow is precious. You are two men, Icelander. When you sit among the warriors at a feast, you draw a cap and cloak over every thought. But when a man is alone with you, you seem the kind of man one would choose to have as a friend. Why is this? When you go to swim in the river, my lord, you do not undress where the people walk to church. My soul is shy, so I do not bear it when the hall is full. Tell me, how did you come to be a ballad singer? From whom did you learn your art? It cannot be learned, my lord. Then how did you acquire it? I received the gift of sorrow and found myself a singer. Is sorrow what a singer needs? I did. Others may need faith, or joy, or doubt. Doubt, too? Yes. But then he who doubts must be strong. And who would you call a weak doubter? He who doubts his own doubt. That sounds to me like death. No, worse than death. It is an everlasting twilight. Where's my sword? I want to fight, not think. What did you come to tell me? The people at the inn are whispering among themselves. They ask if we are quite sure that King Hawken is still hiding in the west. They're pleased about something. The people of Oslo have always been against me. They mock you because the monks at Nidaros refused to bring St. Olaf's holy shrine out of the church when you were proclaimed. They say it is an evil omen. Next time I sail to Nidaros, the shrine shall be brought out. It shall stand in the square for all to see if I have to batter the church to rubble. That will be a great deed. And I shall write a poem to match it. Have you many unsung poems in your head? No. But I have many that are unborn. One by one they are freed and so take life. If I had you killed, would all those unborn poems die within you? My lord, it is a sin to kill a beautiful thought. I'm not asking if it is a sin. I'm asking if it could be done. I don't know. Have you never had another poet as your friend? And has he never told you of a great and noble poem that he wished to write? Yes, my lord. Didn't you wish you might kill him so you could steal his thought and write the poem yourself? My lord, I am not barren. I have children of my own. I do not cover those of other men. Yatgar, who gave you the gift of sorrow? One I loved. Did she die? She proved false. And you became a poet? Yes. What gift do I need to become king? Not the gift of doubt, or you would not have asked. What gift do I need? My lord, you are king. Are you always sure you are a poet? Have you never loved, my lord? Love? Yes, once. Passionately, beautifully, sinfully. You have a wife. I took her because I wanted a son. But you have a daughter, my lord. A gentle and noble daughter. If Margaret had been a son, I would not have asked you what gift I needed. I must have someone by me who will obey me instinctively. Believe in me unflinchingly. 
stand close by me through good days and evil, live only to give light and warmth to my life. Someone who, when I fall, must die. What shall I do, Yadkaya? Buy a dog, my lord. To arms, your majesty. Hawk and his off eldness with all his fleet. So close, he has made good speed. To arms, my lord. If there is to be killing here tonight, I will gladly be the first to die for you. Can you not live for me? Live for my life work and believe in me? Be a son to me? A man can die for another's life work. But if he is to go on living, he must live for his own. What are your orders, my lord? The enemy will be in Oslo within an hour. We must go to blessed Thomas Beckett's grave. He has helped many souls in their hour of need. My lord, I tell you, the enemy is upon us. Let all the churches be open. We must seek sanctuary. You have the chance to destroy your enemies at a blow. This is no time to speak of churches. Yes, yes, keep all the churches open. Who can we violate the sanctuary? No, God will guard him against such a sin. God always guards Hawken. My lord, the sentries will hear you. They will ask, who is king in this land? Yes, Paul Fleder, that is the great question. Who is king in this land? You are unwell tonight, my lord. Let me act for you. Yes, yes, do so. First, we must give the order. Burn all the bridges. Madman, stop! Burn all the bridges? Do you know what that means? Beware of doing that. Every second is precious now, your majesty. King Schooler. Let us burn all the bridges, fight like wolves, and trust in heaven. Heaven will not trust me. I dare not trust in heaven. Our saga has been short, King Skula. You men, follow me. <laughs> A hundred wise heads, a thousand armed men, these are command, but not one loyal and loving heart. Such is the poverty of kings. My lord. Who are you? One whom you once loved. Why do you hide your face? Who are you, I ask? One who loves you. Then you must have come from the dead. You know me now. Ingeborg. Ingeborg. Oh, let me look at you for a long, long time. Oh, oh I loved you. Why did you not return, my love? Take off your veil. Look at me with those eyes that were once as clear and blue as heaven. Those eyes have been a clouded heaven these twenty years. You would not recognize them, and you will never see them again. But your voice is still fresh and soft and young. I have only used it to whisper your name, to impress your greatness on a young heart, and to pray to the God of mercy to forgive us for our sinful love. That is why my voice is still young. A lifetime lies between us. I have put aside every memory of that fair time, yet you have stayed in the cold loneliness of the North, keeping those memories. They have been my happiness. But I left you to win power and riches. If you had stayed by my side, how much easier things might have been. God prevented it. My soul needed a great sin to turn it towards remorse and penitence. And now? I come to you, a widow. Your husband is dead. He took my guilt upon his strong and loving shoulders. He went to fight in the Holy Land and died on the road from Jerusalem, bleeding for my sins. Did he know everything? From the first. Bishop Nicholas knew too, for I confessed to him. Why have you come to me now? To make the final sacrifice. This priest here is Peter, my son. Your son? And yours, King Schooler. Peter is your son. My son. Father, I kneel before you. Take him. He has been the light and comfort of my life for twenty years. Now you are Norway's king. The king's son must enter into his inheritance. I have no right to him any longer. Come to my heart. Oh, I have longed for you with such fire. Father. <laughs> my son, my son, I have a son. Who can withstand me now? You will not take back your word, Ingeborg. Bishop Nicholas enjoined me to make this sacrifice. He sent him to me from his deathbed, imploring this penance for all my sins. Then our sin is wiped out, and now he is mine alone. Yes, 
But I ask one promise of you. I give him into your hands as pure as the Lamb of God. But the path that leads to the throne is dangerous. Do not let his soul be stained. You hear, King Skula. Do not let my son's soul be corrupted. I promise and swear it. Let him rather die than his soul should be stained. He shall rather die, I swear it. Then I can go north to my home in peace. I shall beg God to call me. And when we meet before God, my son will come to his mother pure and unstained. Pure and unstained? To love, to sacrifice everything, and to be forgotten. That has been my saga. Let me look at you. Yes. You have your mother's eyes. You are the one I have been needing. My father, my great and noble father. Let me live and fight for you. Whatever be your cause, I shall know that I am fighting for what is right. You must renounce your vows and march beside me. The king's son must carry a sword. We will go forward together. Yes, together. And when we have gained the kingdom, it shall be yours after me. Peter, my son, listen. You and I shall perform a noble deed for Norway. We shall awake the people and unite them. North and south, mountains and valleys, all shall become one mighty people, and then our country shall grow great through the great thought of a great king and do you believe in it yes yes because i believe in you then hawken hawkinson shall die our hour has come king schooler even now the birch legs are swarming down from the hills sound our trumpets call the men to arms how shall we meet them by seeking sanctuary. All the churches stand open for us. The churches but the enemy all the bridges stand open for them all the bridges stand open a cursed man, what have you done? Obeyed you, my lord. You would not let me destroy the bridges. My son, my son, I have cast away your kingdom. No, father, you will win. So great an idea cannot die. We shall unite the people. <laughs> Merciful God, what's happening? The birch legs are in town. Now go to a bunny school for all he's done. Where are they? I don't know. Storming the bridge. The saints preserve us. Is it the birch legs? Is them all right and King Hawkins with them? His whole fleet is sailing into the harbour. Now we'll avenge his defeat at Lark. Into the church. Bolt the doors. Look. Hawkins Banner. They've taken the bridge. They're charging up the hill. Schooler's men are on the run. Kill Schooler's men! Sanctuary! Sanctuary! To the church! Sanctuary! Shut the churches shut with part the door. Up to the mountains then. Where is King Schooler? He's abandoned us. Come. Away. Oh, there's Hawkins Banner. Do you hear the war cry? Schooler is rallying his men. They're behind the churchyard. Some are fleeing up the mountain. Follow them. Take care, my dear lord. Schooler's men are desperate. They fight for their lives. Is it you, my old friend? You fought for my father <laughs> and his father. Would to God I could fight for you, too. There's no need. Go back to your fireside. You have played your part. The whole of Oslo has risen to join me. Save Here comes the Duke's banner. And the Duke himself riding on his white charger. Don't let him through the gate. Blow, blow, trumpeter. Dog, you blew louder than that when you played for money on Bergen Bridge. Is it true? 
Yes, my lord, I knew them both. Brother against brother. Father against son. Almighty God, let there be an end to this killing. Here comes Duke Schooler. Bar the gate against him. Bar the gate against the pretender. Cut them down, spare no one. Cut them down. No way is a new heir to the throne, Richard. Schooler Bardson. Let us share the kingdom. All or nothing, Hawken. All or nothing. Think of your daughter. Think of Margaret. I have a son. Now I have a son. I have a son too. If I die, he will inherit my crown. Kill Hawkins' son wherever you find him. Kill him on the altar. Kill him even in his mother's arms. You have pronounced your own death. Your own death. Your own death. Schooler has a son. Kill. 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 They are making their way through, Darkfin. Yes. But they are fighting to escape. By heaven, yes. The other gate is open. Fleeing into the mountains. My lord, Skuller is defeated. You heard him. He condemned my son, my innocent child, the rightful heir to Norway's crown. He would murder my son, his own grandson. We will have him. And the punishment for such a crime? Yes. yes. Then Skuller shall die. I hereby swear it. Skuller Bardson shall die, wherever he be met on unconsecrated ground. It is every loyal man's duty to kill him. Where is the queen? She is here, my lord. See. My heaviest task is still before me. She loves her father. No word to her about the danger to her child. Swear to me, all of you. Protect your king's son, but no word to her. Swear. You swear. swear. Hawken, my husband. Heaven has protected you. You have won. You are an arm. Yes, I have won. Where is our son? On board your ship in safe hands. Go down there, some of you. Watch over him. Hawken, where is he? He has fled into the hills. And he is alive. Oh, my husband. May I thank God for preserving you? Listen to me, Margaret. You have been a loyal wife to me. You have followed me in good times and evil. You have given me your love unceasingly. Now I must cause you great sorrow. I have striven to avoid it. But I am king, and therefore I must... Is it? Is it my father? Yes. I could suffer no greater punishment than to have to live without you, but if, after what I am going to tell you, if you feel you can no longer stay at my side, no longer look at me without turning pale, well, then we must part and live alone, and I shall not blame you for it. Part from you? How can you think of such a thing? Give me your hand. No, no, do not touch it. I have just raised it in a bloody oath. An oath, an oath that sealed a death sentence. <gasps> my father? Yes. As king, I have condemned your father to death. If you now decide we must part, so be it. Hawken, we can never part. I am your wife and nothing else. Only your wife. Do you understand? I have condemned your father. I understand. And you do not ask to know his crime? It is enough that you know. But I have condemned him to death. My husband and most mighty lord... I know your judgment is just. How red it glows. It covers half the sky like a flaming sword. Yes, it's it's under life. What do such dreadful signs portend? The death of Hawken, my good comrades. He is lying out in the fjord with his fleet. We can expect him tonight. This time we shall win. Don't be too sure. There's little courage in our army now. Ever since we fled from Oslo, we have been without a leader. Why does Skula shut himself away in there? Why won't he speak to us? I've tried to reason with him. It's no use. Our lives are at stake. The king must show himself. Your Majesty, your people need you. You must speak to your men. I am sick. Poor you have not eaten for two days. I'm sick. Almighty God, that cannot be helped. King Hawkon is in the fjord. He may be upon us at any moment. Kill him and kill his child. You must lead us, my lord. Oh, no, no, you are sure of victory without me. The people are restless. They're gathering in front of the palace. If your father doesn't speak to them, they'll betray him when he needs them most. He must speak to them. Father. The citizens of Nidoros, your loyalist subjects, will abandon your cause unless you give them courage. I cannot give what is not mine. Then rejoice, for you cannot give away the kingdom, for it is mine as well as yours. I am coming. God be praised. God be praised. Don't look at me. I'm sick. Father, 
Give away your kingdom, did you say? Great God, what has possessed me? Forgive me. No, no, I've been asleep, but now I shall be strong. King Skula! King Skula! What is that shouting? The representatives of the people are gathered in the courtyard. You must speak to them. Do I look like a king? Can I show myself? You must. So be it. Look. There in the sky, the sword of fire still hangs over me. It is an omen, father. A sword of victory. What it were so. Let the people come in, speak to them, assure them victory is at hand. Bid them enter. Bring in the people. People of Nidoros, what do you want? Here stands your king. Leave. You must leave our town. Your enemies will burn us and kill us if they find you here. We must stand together. I have been a good king to you. I have asked little from you. What about the bloodshed at Larka? Give me back my husband. Give me back my father and brother. Give me my three sons. You are not our king. The monks refuse to bring out the sacred shrine. You are not our lawful king. You must leave Nidoros. Come. Not lawful, not king. If the townspeople desert us, we cannot hold Nidoros. I am nothing without the shrine. Then let it be brought forth. Now. Impossible. Nothing is impossible. Sound the trumpet, summon all the people, and bring forth the shrine. Sacrilege! You cannot violate the shrine. It is not sacrilege. If the monks support us... They fear the wrath of their archbishop. You call yourselves the king's men and dare not help him now. My father and my king, the monks, shall do this. I will beg them. I will entreat them on my knees. We shall show the people who is the lawful king. Did you see him? Did you see my noble son? How his eyes shone. The people will stay with us now. We shall fight and conquer and end this dreadful war. It is the will of heaven. See how God's blazing sword hangs in the stars above our heads. The knights are troubled. Women stagger in labor at their prayers. Priests rave in the street, proclaiming the day of judgment. God is angry. He demands that it be ended. And by all our holy saints, it shall. What are your orders, sire? Burn all the bridges. Bid them burn all the bridges. Yes, my lord. Muster my army at the waterside. No man of Hawkins shall set foot in Nidoros. Bravely said, my lord. Sound the trumpets when the shrine is brought forth. Summon the people. Bid them prepare to sound. Go to the window. Speak to the people, my lord. Hold fast to me, all ye who weep and mourn. Trust and believe in me. I need your trust. Citizens of Nidoros, I shall watch and fight for you. I shall bleed and fall for you if God so wills it. But do not abandon me and do not doubt. What is that? Repent. The priest, possessed by the devil, rending his cassock, scourging himself. Repent, repent. The day of judgment is come. What is happening? The crowd shrieks back in terror. Some wild beasts have come up. They're all fleeing. No matter, we are saved. Look. By heaven. The shrine. The sacred shrine stands in the square. The monks are loyal. They have shown their faith. The trumpets. Now, I shall be lawfully proclaimed. Put on your royal robe, Father. St. Olaf's shrine stands in the courtyard. You have saved my kingdom and yours. We shall reward the pious monks richly for yielding to our entreaties. Why? Why reward them? Surely they helped you. The monks pronounced the church's curse on any who dared touch the holy relic. The archbishop, then? He has yielded at last. He ordered them. The archbishop pronounced a heavier curse than the monks. Excommunication. Then I still have loyal subjects. Down there, among the common people, I have friends who dared to risk damnation for my sake. Not one of them moved a step towards the church. Almighty God, then, has a miracle occurred? Who removed the relic? I did, Father. You, sacrilege. There was no other way. I begged. I entreated the monks, but to no avail. So I broke open the church door. No one dared follow me. I leapt onto the high altar, seized the handle of the shrine, and set my knees against the wall. It seemed as though some mysterious power gave me more than my mortal strength. I wrenched, and the shrine broke loose. 
I dragged it after me down the aisle while their curses whispered in the rafters like a storm. I dragged it out of the church. The crowd shrank from me as I came down the steps and fled as I crossed the courtyard. I reached the center alone, and as I set down the shrine, the handle snapped from the casket. Here it is. Sacrilege. For your sake. For the sake of your great ideal, you will bring light and peace, a new and shining dawn for Norway. What does it matter if the night before is stormy? You will wipe out my guilt. When your mother brought you to me, I seemed to see a halo about your head. Now God's thunderbolt has withered it. Don't be afraid for my soul, father. It's your will I have fulfilled. I prayed for you to believe in me, and your faith has become a sin. It was for your sake, for you. God will wash it clean. Pure and unstained, I promised Ingeborg, and now her son blasphemed. The city is in an uproar. This dreadful deed has filled your men with terror. They are fleeing into the churches. No, no, bar the doors. The people have risen against you. Look! They're killing our soldiers in the streets. The boat's legs are sailing up the river. Sound the trumpets, summon my men. Impossible fear has paralyzed them. I cannot fail now, Paul Fleeder. My son must not die with a mortal sin on his head. Save yourself, father. Yes, we must flee. Any man who would save his life, follow me. Which way? Over the bridge. All the bridges have been burnt, my lord. Burnt? All the bridges, Paul Fleeder? All. You should have let them burn in Oslo. Then you could have let them stand in Nidaros. Then we must cross the river. Our salvation is at stake. Who knows where the pretender is hiding? In one of the churches, my lord. Are you sure? Yes, all his men are seeking sanctuary. He must be found, Darkfin. Set guards on all the churches. And when we find them, is he to be killed? Killed? Darkfin. My lord, you swore a solemn oath in Oslo. And every man in Norway will demand his death, I know. Leave me. My lord. Gregorius. My lord? You were once his friend. Find him. Tell him to flee the country. God bless you, my lord. For my lord. dear wife's sake. And if he will not flee or cannot... Then in God's name he must die. I cannot break my oath. Go. I'll do my best. Heaven grant I may succeed. Dugfin. My lord. Choose trusty men and go down to my ship. You must accompany the Queen and my son to St. Stephen's Abbey. My lord, will she be safe there? Nowhere safe. Her schooler's men have locked themselves in the churches, and she has prayed so often to go to St. Stephen's. Her mother will be with her. Very good, my lord. Greet Her Majesty most dearly from me. Tell her that as soon as our enemies have surrendered and received a royal pardon, all the bells in Nidoros shall be rung as a sign that peace has returned to our land. Tell her. Schooler must be hunted down and killed. We must find him and kill him. Without his death, there can be no peace. Sit down and rest, Father. Yes, rest. I need rest and peace. I'm sick. Sick. I see dead men in shadows. Help him. Bring bread for the king. Every man is king here. Our lives are at stake. Stand up, school of arts, and if you are king, you cannot rule the land buried in mud. I'll kill you if you mock my father. Unless we can think of a plan to save ourselves, we shall all die. Could we reach St. John's Abbey? Or St. Stephen's, that's nearer. No. Let's go to Hawkins' ship and seize his child. Are you mad? They're all in the town, searching the houses and standing guard on the churches. The bridges are all down, so they won't reckon on any of us being this side of the river. We can take them by surprise. No, we and can't. And if we get the prince in our power, we can ransom him for a royal pardon. Who come with me? I will. And me. Peter. I'll join you when I see my father in safe hands. We must be clear of the river by daybreak. From here, I know a shortcut. Put out the torches. We must make haste. No word of this to my father, Paul Fleeder. By dawn, we shall have the prince in our hands. What will you do if Hawken will not pardon us? Kill the child. Kill? It cannot be a sin. He stands in my father's way. Whatever happens, the child must die. Our king has a great plan to fulfill. It matters little who is sacrificed. It was an evil day for you when you learned you were King Schooler's son. Hush! Lie flat on the ground. Someone is coming. It's the queen. 
queen. Yes, yes, hush. Listen. They're going to St. Stephen's. The prince is with them. And the queen's women. But only four guards. Rise, rise, King Schooler. Your kingdom is saved. My kingdom? It is dark like the kingdom of the angel who rebelled against God. Wait, footsteps. Somebody's coming. Who's there? Are you King Schooler's men? King Schooler himself. God be praised that we have found you, my dear lord. We heard you were taken to the hills and have brought monks clothing for you and your men. Have put them on and you can gain entry to St. Stephen's Abbey. There you can beg Hawken for pardon. Yes, give me a cassock. I and my son must seek refuge on consecrated ground. Take us to the Abbey. Wolf leader, see that my father gets there safely. Have you forgotten there are birch legs there? Only four men. You can easily deal with them, and once you're inside on consecrated ground, they won't dare touch you. I'll go and fetch board bra. Think what you are doing. It is not in the king's ship, but at St. Stephen's Abbey that we outlaws shall save the kingdom for my father. For the rest, let us go two by two. Every monk with a soldier. Hurry, let us take different paths and meet outside the abbey gate. Oh, sh sh Come, King Schooler. Do you know the path? The broad path. Peter, my son, the blasphemer. There is the comet again. A burning sword shining in the sky. And here am I. Who are you? An old acquaintance. I never saw a man so pale. You don't recognize me? You are the one who is to see me safe to the Abbey. I am the one who will see you safely to the throne. Can you do that? I can, if you will it. How? By the means I used before, I will lead you up to a high mountain and show you all the glory of the world. I've seen that before in dreams that tempted me. It was I who gave you those dreams. Who are you? A messenger from the oldest pretender in the world. A messenger from the first earl who rebelled against the greatest of kings and who founded a kingdom that shall last until doomsday. Bishop Nicholas! You know me now. We were friends once in the self-same bark for many a year. We have steered the same course together. I was afraid when we parted. It was night time and stormy. A hawk had fastened its claws in my soul. I bade them say masses and ring the bells. I paid the monks to pray and sing. But still, I didn't get in through the gate. You've come from the kingdom beneath the earth. Now listen and I'll tell you why I've been sent. This Hawken Hawkinson's no man for us. We dislike him. He's always giving us trouble, so he must fall and you must reign. You alone must wear the crown. How? How? At St. Stephen's Abbey, the royal prince sleeps. Once you catch him in the web of death, your enemies will scatter like dust. Then you'll be king. Then you will conquer. Are you so sure? The whole of Norway is crying for peace. And a king is no king without an heir, a son, to inherit his father's throne. Rise up, King Skula. The deed must be done tonight. Either you or he must fall. The ships are gathering noiselessly. The earth rings hollow with tramping feet. All this is yours, if you say the word. A thousand warriors to march behind you, and a thousand shining sails to carry you. What must I say? To stand on the topmost rung of the ladder, you have but to do what your heart commands. The land and all it contains shall be yours, if your son succeeds you as king of Norway. My son shall succeed. My son. A church robber, a man who desecrates God's holiest shrines, all power to him? Oh, now I understand you. You want our country to be damned. Get away from me. Oh, God, have mercy upon me now when I cry unto thee for help in my hour of greatest need. Ah, well, I'm not in a hurry. Perpetuum mobile. My power is assured for generations I shall always rule those who fear the light. They will all be my faithful subjects here, agreed on only one thing in the world, that everything great must be brought low. The mark of meanness, their only banner, and honor an outcast from their doors. 
Then Bishop Nicholas rules in men's hearts, the faithful bishop, pursuing his calling. Guide? Guide, where are you? Where is he? My dark counsellor. Gone. No matter. Only Paul's leader remains waiting. Now I know my way both to St. Stephen's Abbey and beyond. Guard the gate. No one is to leave her into the Abbey. No, no, it cannot be. King Scudo would never beg for mercy. Calm yourself, dearest. They cannot condemn him to death, Margaret. Your father is the king. God will punish you for letting it come to this. You don't know what you're saying. It is your grief that speaks. Hear me, you birch legs. It was Hawken who begged the king for mercy. It was Hawken who pleaded for his life. She is distraught. <laughs> king Skula will sit on the throne again, and when he does, beware. Mother. And you can love this usurper. Are you your father's child? May God punish you for your loyalty to this man of blood. Mother. Get away from me. I must search the churches and find my husband. Open the gate. I must go to Nidoros. Oh, in God's blessed name. Who is it? A king. Schooler Barton. King Schooler. My husband. My father. Open. Open. There is no sanctuary here for outlaws. It is a king who knocks, I say. A king without shelter. Darkvin, he is my father. How many men have you? All who stayed loyal in my hour of need. How many is that? Less than one. He is alone, Darkfin. May the wrath of heaven smite you if you refuse him entry. God's name, then. Oh, father. My blessed, unhappy father. Shut the gate. Do not go near him. Do not dare to touch him. You pretend to honor him, bearing your heads in reverence, but you will betray him like Judas. He is safe here on holy ground. Did no one stay with you? The monks and soldiers kept me company on the road, but they stole away from me, one by one. My old friend, Paul Fleder, was the last to go. He came as far as the Abbey Gate. There he gave me a last embrace and thanked me for the days when there were great chieftains in Norway. I must write to Nidoros and tell the king that Skula Bartzel is here. Darkfin, Darkfin, can you do this? Will you betray him? I would be a poor servant of my king and my country if I did not. You men, close the gate behind me. Guard the child and do not open to anyone until the king comes. We will guard the prince with our lives. Farewell, school of Arts, and God grant you a good end. Close the gate. Remember, watch over the prince. We will. We will. If Hawken come, I won't let them take you. I shall hold you in my arms and keep them from you. Oh, how pale you look. And cold as death. I'm not cold, but tired. I'm tired. Then come in and rest. Yes, yes. My time has come to rest. So, you have come at last, my brother. A secret. I promised we would meet when you needed me in your soul's extremity. Where is your child, Margaret? Sleeping in our sacristy. Then all our house is gathered here tonight. Yes. We are all together after long years in the wilderness. Now we only lack Hawk and Hawkinson. Father. My husband. Ragnold. Margaret, have you loved me so much? I sought fulfillment in the world outside and never realized I had a home where I might find it. Oh, Ragnold, I have sinned so greatly against you, and you have come to me warm and loving in my hour of need. You tremble and fear for the life of a man who has never cast a glint of sunshine on your robe. You sinned? Oh, Skula, do not speak so. Do you think I would ever dare blame you for that? I've never been worthy of you, my noble husband. You've done no wrong to me. Have you believed in me so steadfastly? From the first day I saw you. Oh, you gentle, loving woman. Life is still good. When Hawken comes, I will beg for pardon. I will implore him for... Schooler, my brother, beware if you stray from the only path open to you. Who knocks at the gate? The people of Nidoros. Open up. We know School of Bardison is there. Yes, he is here. What do you want with him? Come out. Come out. Evil man, you must die. You dare to threaten your king. King Hawkins is content to pretend to death. It is our duty to kill him. I am your queen. 
I command you to leave this place. You speak a schooler's daughter and not the queen. You cannot save him now. The king has condemned him. Go into the chapel, schooler. In God's blessed name, do not let these murderers come near you. The chapel, yes. Into the chapel. My wife, my daughter. At last I have found peace and light. It must not be taken from me so soon. My father! Look, the blasphemer. There on the abbey roof. My king! Victory is in our hands! Peter! Stone him! Stone him! Stone him! Where is the prince? The prince? What do you want with him? Lord Brata and his men are on their way. I told them this was where they would find the prince. Oh, God. You told them? Where is the prince, woman? Where is Hawkins' son? Asleep in the sacristy. No one can harm him there. I wouldn't care if he slept on the altar itself. I've stolen a shrine from a church and I'm not afraid to steal a prince. <gasps> Is this the son you love? When his mother brought him to me, he was as pure as the Lamb of God. His faith in me has damned him. The child must be brought out. Kill him. Kill him in his mother's arms. Those were King Schooler's words, and a saint could obey them with a clear conscience for the sake of his great ideal. Open up! Come out, blasphemer, or we will burn down the abbey. My great ideal. Yes, that is what has poisoned your soul. My great ideal. Pure and unstained, I promise to hand you back to her. Your belief in me has driven you from crime to crime, from sin to mortal sin, but I can still save you. I can still save us all. Wait, good citizens, wait. I am coming. You must not go outside. They will kill you. Schooler, let him go, woman, let him go. Your soul has found wings at last, my brother. Peter! Listen to me. You saw in me the chosen one of heaven, the one who would accomplish a mighty deed for Norway. Open your eyes, blind boy. Look at me. These rags of kingship in which I have decked myself are borrowed and stolen. Now I put them off one by one. The great vision was Hawkins, not mine. He alone was endowed by God to fulfill it. You have believed in a lie. Turn from me now and save your soul. The idea... Hawkins... I yearn to be the greatest man in the land. Oh, God. God, see, I humble myself before thee and stand in thy sight the meanest of all. Oh, Lord, take me from this earth. Punish me for all my sins, but take me from this earth, for I am homeless here now. I had a friend who died for me in Oslo, a poet and singer. He said, a man can die for another's life work, but if he is to live, he must live for his own. I have no life work of my own to live for, and I cannot live for organs, but I can die for it. No, no, never. Do you love your husband, Margaret? More than anything in the world. You could bear to hear him sentence me to death. <laughs> but could you bear it if he carried out that sentence? Could of heaven grant me strength. Could you, Margaret? No, no. We would have to part. I could never bear to see him again. Then you would shut out the light from his life and from yours. <laughs> Don't be afraid. You won't have to do it. Flee the country, schooler. I will follow you no matter where. With a shadow dividing us and mocking us, I have found you tonight for the first time. <laughs> no shadow must come between us now, my loyal and gentle wife. We must not meet again on this earth. My royal brother, I see you do not need me. You know now which way you have to go. I know now, Sigrid. There are men who were created to live and men who were created to die. I always longed to go where God's finger did not point for me, and so my way has always been dark, but now I see it clearly. Margaret, look, look upwards. See how it pales and fades, the flaming sword that has been drawn above me. Yes, God has spoken, and I have understood him, and his wrath is stilled. My sanctuary is not here. I shall not beg for mercy from an earthly king. I shall enter the great church whose roof is the stars and beg for mercy and forgiveness from the king of kings. Father. Do not prevent him. Do not oppose the will of God. 
A bright dawn is breaking for Norway and for his restless soul. Have not we women hidden long enough in our rooms, listening to all the terror without, the bloodletting that has drained our country dry? Have we not lain pale and petrified in the churches, not daring to look out, as the disciples of Christ lay in Jerusalem on that sad Friday when he walked to Golgotha? Use your wings, my brother, and woe to those who would bind you now. Go hence in peace, my husband. Go where no mocking shadow will stand between us when we meet again. Father. <sighs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Come forth. Come forth, women. Join your voices in prayer. Let your song rise up to God and tell him that Schooler Bardson is returning home, repentant from his journey of disobedience on earth. Sigrid, my loyal sister, greet King Hawken from me. Tell him that even in my last hour, I do not know whether he is royally born, but that this I know assuredly. He is the one whom God has chosen. I shall give him that greeting. And there is one more greeting you must give. There sits a woman sorrowing in the north. Tell her that her son has gone ahead of her. He went with me because his soul was in danger. I will tell her. Tell her he did not sin with his heart. When she meets him again, she will find him pure and unstained. I will tell her. Break the lock. Listen. They are breaking the lock. Listen. They are singing to God of salvation and peace. Listen, listen. All the bells in Nidaros are ringing. They are ringing a king to his grave. No, they are ringing you to your true coronation. Farewell, my brother. Let the purple cloak of blood flow over your shoulders. It will wash away all sins. Go in. Go into the great church and receive the crown of life. We have broken the lock. Do not force us to violate the sanctuary. I am coming. The blasphemer must come too. Yes, the blasphemer shall come too. Are you ready? Yes, Father. I am ready. Oh, God, I am a poor man. I have only my life to give. But take it and grant that Hawkins' great ideal may be fulfilled. Come now. Give me your hand, and don't be afraid. No, Father. I'm not afraid when I'm with you. We never trod so safe a road together. We are coming. Blasphemer! Here we are. We come freely, but do not wound him in the face. Spur not. Strike them where you can. <laughs> Kill the blasphemer! <laughs> <laughs> The king! Hail King Hawkon. All your enemies are dead. Then I have come too late for my old commander. It would have been an evil day for Norway if you had come before, Gregorius. Enter the Abbey, King Hawken. King Hawken. Pretender's body lies in my way. If Hawken Hawkinson is to go forward, he must go over this body. All men judged him wrongly. He was a riddle that no man solved. A riddle? Skulabadsen was God's unwanted child on earth. 
That was his riddle. You must go over the body. Over his body. Now, at last, my way forward is clear. In The Pretenders by Henrik Ibsen and translated by Michael Mayer, Nicholas was played by Paul Schofield, Hawken by Michael Sheen, and Schooler by Gerard Murphy. Margaret was Jasmine Hyde, Peter, James Darcy, Ragnild, Sarah Bedell, Sigrid and Ingeborg, Maureen O'Brien, Dogfin, David Bannerman, Bode, Ian Masters, Gregorius, John Evitz, Paul Fleder, Carl Prekop, Bord Prater, David Collings, Sigard and Chieftain, Sam Crane. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Music composed and selected by Mike Sykes. The Pretenders was adapted for radio and directed by Martin Jenkins. This has been a peer production for BBC Radio 3.